In Duneland, Al Capone has a mythology of influence. There are rumors of shootouts, rum running, and even murder. But how many of these stories can we actually tie to Capone? Al Capone was born in Brooklyn in 1899. He became involved in Johnny Torrio's gang when he was only a teenager. In 1919, Capone was relocated to Chicago for his own safety after he assaulted a rival gang member. He was set up with a crime boss, Big Jim Colosimo. However, Colosimo was quickly assassinated after Capone's arrival to make way for Johnny Torrio's reign. Torrio ruled until 1924, and when he retired, Capone began his own short but brutal rule of the city's criminal underground. By 1931, Capone was in prison for tax evasion. He was released in 1939 and then lived in Miami until he died in 1947. This means that Capone truly only ran the Chicago underground for seven years, although many claim he still ruled from behind bars. Rum running is the largest connection that Duneland has to Capone. While not all rum running and moonshining was gang affiliated, Capone was known to secure influence through the sale of illegal liquor, and Duneland is situated in a great location between Chicago and Canada where much of Chicago's illegal liquor originated. The Mineral Springs Spa restaurant was rumored to have connections to Capone, especially through the liquor trade. Harry Day, the owner of the spa and restaurant, sold water bottles full of healing mineral water out of his home for years before opening the restaurant in 1933. The rumors of illegal liquor and gang clientele were perpetuated by the spa's convenient placement on the Little Calumet River with a pier and river-facing double doors that led into the basement cellar of the bar. While these features could have been initially built for accessing and hiding illegal liquor, they also could have been used for normal shipments of food and beverage to the restaurant. In addition, the spa restaurant was also later raided for illegal gambling, and a slot machine was confiscated, which may have fueled the rumors that Harry Day previously had connections to Capone. The truth is we don't know for a fact that this connection was real. In January of 1933, only a few minutes away from the spa, the body of known gangster Ted Newberry was found in a ditch in Baileytown. Upon discovery of the body, local police determined Ted to be a gangster based on the diamonds encrusting his belt buckle. The Vidette claimed that the buckle was given to Ted by Capone personally. Ted was connected to both the Moran Gang as well as the Capone Gang, and it is believed that Ted was not killed in Porter County, but killed elsewhere and his body relocated to disguise the crime. Dr. Carl M. Davis was the county coroner at this time. He later recalled a young, bright-eyed gangster with a fistful of big bills coming in to claim Ted's body and pay for the embalming service. Davis refused the money and was in turn granted a favor if he was ever in any trouble in Chicago. Davis claims he never traded in this favor, but did say that bodies being dumped along US-12 wasn't an uncommon occurrence during his time, and some of the bodies would have split tongues, indicating they were caught snitching. There are also the stories of Capone owning property in Duneland that cannot be fully disputed. These stories and many others show that mafia activity did occur in Duneland, but they also show how difficult it is to definitively tie any of this activity directly to Capone. While Capone's influence did extend to this area, his reach was complicated by the other gang activity of the time. And truth be told, we may never know the specifics.